Hello guys, you're welcome to learn from Chaz Blitz, my own streaming show. So after some break, which was uh, caused by vacation, I'm back and I'm going to play some decent chess today. That is my primary goal because I'm still in the search of a good form. It was uh, kind of big problem for me uh, to recover after uh, some serious losses that happened to me um actually um several months ago uh over the board i mean uh, during normal uh tournaments especially the one in karlsruhe and um well i'm happy that the things are changing slightly step by step um so if you are for the first time here uh, we are playing on leechess.org uh, you can find me among uh, other players. Uh, I use a nickname Mostrovsky. So you can simply come and challenge me. I prefer five minutes because uh, when uh, you play a five minute game, uh, you can explain more things. So you simply have more time. And that is uh, my main goal. Um, so actually, to make you learn something new about chess. Um, also, I would recommend you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can find the link um, just uh, behind my uh, name. Uh, it is bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. It is a short link leading to um, my YouTube channel. There you can uh, press the button subscribe and also turn on the reminder so that uh, you will be notified every time when I'm online. All right, so uh, I can see the live chat is live. So there are at least uh, two guys already here. I'm happy that uh, you are with me today. And let us start playing chess. So I'm waiting for challenges. Uh, let's see if I have something. Uh, not yet, so uh, at the moment I can probably uh, play some games. So let's uh, make a challenge. Um, so three minutes. All right, just for one or two games probably. And then at some point we will switch to five minute games. Uh, but I'm just waiting for your challenges, guy. I prefer playing uh, against uh, viewers. So to make it instructive. Here we go, D3, interesting move. So let's react with the normal E5. D5 is also absolutely playable, I believe. And now we have sort of um, Philidor defense reversed. So white has extra tempo and we have to be careful. So what to do here? Let's try d5. So episode number eight is called positional chess. So I will try um, some decent uh, moves without experiments. Well, actually, positional chess means that you play not what you want, but what position requires. Um, so queen d5 is vulnerable here because of knight c3. So let's try to prevent the attack. So bishop b4 check, the point here is that after c3, there is no longer a possibility for white to uh, play knight to c3. Attacking my queen, so my queen starts feeling more or less comfortable here. Now the question is where to put my bishop on c5. It will be quite vulnerable to b4, c4, c5. So I will just go back to e7. Maybe not the best way to play this, but okay. Still quite good in my opinion. Okay, h3 may be used as a hook later on. So maybe I will uh, continue with the attack like h6, g5, g4. So let's play this h6 because my point is to put the bishop on e6 or maybe f5 and h6 uh, is just very useful in this situation because uh, for example if i put the bishop on e6 there is no knight g5 and now i'm fine with castling long i guess which is usually an option when you have the queen on d5 so why not and now, to start the attack with the g5, g4, looks very natural, uh, so let's do it. So there are already some challenges, very nice. 
So let's finish this game first and then get to challenges. I have a feeling that I can still play g4, but I will start with rook g8, protecting g5 pawn. I don't want to sacrifice the material. a7 pawn is potentially under attack. Is it necessary to take it for white? Well, let's play a6 again without risk. It also creates kind of hook. And bishop f3 is something that I underestimated. Okay, now I guess it's better for me to put the queen on b5. Yeah, that was bad. That was very bad, giving my opponent a chance to damage my pawn structure. All right, after all, it is just a Sunday morning, so I'm still slipping, perhaps. <laughs> So now I have bad pawn structure and have to compensate it somehow with active counterplay using the power of bishops mainly. And after f5 I have a feeling that I win some material. So c5 is covered, so knight can't go to c5. If knight goes to d2 after f4, I can't trap that bishop. So there is a square a7 possible to occupy, but then my king goes to b7 and I trap the bishop. All right, my opponent is probably also in a sleeping mode still. So let's use it. Oh, bishop d4. Well, probably here is only one person who's still sleeping. It's me. Okay, so let's protect the pawn. So if ed4, then rook e6, obviously. Let's go away. The bishop is under attack. The pawn on d3 is also under attack. But of course, it leads to a bad position for black. So I regain the material, but look at this pawn structure. It is still very, very bad. Okay. Oh no, I have an extra pawn. That's fine. I don't know why I decided that I was material down. I have no idea. I'm just fine now, so extra pawn. But bishop f5 was a move because now knight g4 is possible. Regaining the material for sure. <laughs> yeah, one blunder after another. That's very bad. That's very, very bad. Okay. At least I control some squares, but look at this. I have no time. Absolutely. Yeah, I lost this on time. Absolutely deserved defeat. So let's have a look in this uh, crap. So after knight f3, I was more or less fine. So d5 takes, takes. Okay, it's playable, I guess. White has an extra tempo. But we have something typical for um, Philidor defense. Okay, bishop b4, c3, bishop e7. So the normal uh, opening play. G5, knight h2, I think black is already fine here, but uh, it was necessary to do something with this threat of bishop f3 because it was probably the only active possibility for white. And I should have played something like queen d7, I believe. So 
to prevent this bishop f3 and to prepare d5 square for my knight. After which knight goes to d5, then probably takes on e3, maybe goes to f4, and I also prepare f7, f5 this way, and I think black should be much better. So instead, I started playing something really strange, rook g8, queen a4. It was still possible here to play queen d7, by the way, and it was probably the best possibility of sacrificing this pawn on a7, but I don't think it matters a lot. Um, and so uh, after that, knight e5 and so forth. Okay, now let's get to uh, challenges from viewers. And here is the question. Why have you stopped the late night streams? I particularly enjoyed playing at the night streams rather than uh, during the afternoons. Um, so I actually stopped all the streams because of vacation and now I'm getting back. So I will probably stick with uh, Sunday and Monday each and every week. Um, so uh, you can suggest uh, the time that suits you. I will uh, try to collect different opinions and to come up with uh, kind of compromise. So um, I would like to actually stream exactly when uh, my viewers are uh, active and uh, well, I'll try to serve the needs of uh, my viewers mainly. So just suggest it um, after the show ends, I mean uh, in the comments to the produced video because uh, everything that you uh, write in live chat stays in live chat and disappears after the show. All right, uh, here is the challenge from Chronic Student, uh, the one and another one from Alt Left. So let's start with uh, Chronic Student. He was first, I guess. And let's play. So E4. Mm, there will be Sicilian, I believe, because Chronic Student is a big fan of uh, Sicilian defense. So Knight takes D4, Knight F6, Knight C3. So there are not so many challenges, probably because uh, this is not uh, the best time to start the broadcast on Sunday, right? Uh, so maybe it's just too early for Sunday, but we'll see. Okay, maybe some players will come slightly later. All right, bishop goes away, bishop e3 now. So usually I play king h1. Let's try immediate f4 now. The point is to prevent knight e5 followed by knight g4 or knight c4. So it's completely playable. I mean, to play king to h1, of course, but I already have some experience with this, so I want to try something else. So typical idea for positions with the bishop on this diagonal a2 g8 to try f4 f5. Simply uh, forcing pony 6 maybe going to e5. Weaken in the d5 square. And if black plays e5 immediately instead of taking on c6, I have knight takes c6 and then knight d5. Very annoying thing. And this actually drops pawn b6. Can I take it? Queen b6 takes, takes. Mm, yes, I think I have this possibility. Why not? Because I have this a5 move. Looks very, very smooth. Looks like a pawn for no compensation. The only potential problem is, of course, e4 pawn. But I think I can protect it easily with the rook e1. Do I have something better than rook e1 here? For example, bishop c4 looks interesting, just attacking a6. In which case, after knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, I can take that pawn and I will have uh, connected pass pawns on a and b files. I can also try knight e5 with a simplification. So knight e5, let's say, um, e d5, or bishop takes d5, bishop d5, e d5, this way. Also deserves attention, but Mm, I would like actually to put the minor piece on d5 and to replace it with the minor piece. That's my idea here. So let's activate all the pieces. If there is an exchange sacrifice, I don't think black will have a sufficient compensation because I'm already a pawn up. So if I will be just an exchange up in addition to this, I guess, 
will be good. So, now I'm more or less ready to play knight e5, I think. c2 is not hanging. And after this total exchange on d5, I will recapture with the rook. So that is what I wanted to do. Maybe it wasn't necessary, to be honest. Okay, let's start with this bishop a7, forcing the rook to a8 square. And now bishop goes to f2. So I didn't want black to take on b6, that's why I went back with the bishop. The only thing I wanted to make sure that after bishop goes away, uh, the rook isn't active along the b-file. All right, now knight d5 looks just fine. Uh, bishop d5 as well, so let's put the knight on d5. Feels like I control everything on the board. So knight b6 looks very interesting now. Let's do it. Now I guess I can do the following thing. Bishop d5 to start with. Now what? Bishop takes c5, that is what I wanted to play. To simplify position slightly. I guess dc5 is forced. Now c4 deserved attention just blockading the pawn on c5 and making bishop b7 quite passive. Uh, there is also a possibility for me to play something like rook e to d2. Double rooks along the d-file and uh, no, let's start with the c4. Very good out pause on d5. Yeah, black has no counterplay at all. Now I think I can take on b7 simply. And I have this great knight against this bad bishop. So let's double rooks. Do I have some tactics? Yes, I think I do. So rook d6 followed by knight c8 wins. Wins the game. Yeah, it's lost now. And I think that um, there was a very early mistake somewhere. So let's say after bishop a2, knight c6, bishop b3, castles and f4, uh, b6 was already quite strange. In my opinion, it was better to play bishop d7, so to stick to this uh, normal plan. There is also an interesting idea to play knight b4 followed by d6, d5 at some point. Um, but I think that uh, bishop d7 is just fine. Uh, also, it is possible to try knight a5 creating a threat of knight c4. And after queen e2, which is more or less forced, because I want to have the rook on d1 at least uh, prior to playing bishop c1 in the response to knight c4. Uh, black can continue with uh, this bishop d7 followed by probably rook to c8 and then anyway get into uh, c4 square. So that is the typical plan here and uh, I think that uh, it was uh, the best possibility. So I guess there is some noise in the background that you can hear. Uh, that is because my um, relatives came to um, make a walk with uh, my son um, so it will this noise will go away very soon so after b6 I think I'm already very good after f5 so now if e5 as I said during the game I can take on c6 and after queen c6 my knight goes straightforwardly to d5 um, with a nasty threat of taking on e7 
It is also possible to uh, force the exchange, by the way, to play bishop d5 here. Also interesting idea. So knight takes d5, knight takes d5. And now I have this uh, super knight against this uh, bishop. Moreover, it is hanging. There is also b6 pawn, which is hanging. Um, and if uh, bishop goes to d8, let's say I have this f6 just completely opening the position on the king side and uh, I think winning the game very soon. So it's not the move uh, at all. Uh, so knight d4 was probably a good decision, but after queen d4, of course, b6 is hanging, so it was necessary for black to do something uh, else, maybe to protect b6 square, and there is also the recommendation from the engine to play d6, d5 with the counterplay, but based on bishop c5, could be also an interesting thing. Um, so maybe it was better for me not to uh, take on d4 with the queen, just to take with the bishop, uh, but in this case, I, I attack nothing and... Uh, I just wanted to make a tempo move, but I probably underestimated this d5, objectively speaking. All right, but after I won the pawn, of course, on b6, I think I'm already much better. So it is a completely convertible advantage. That is, I think, uh, the main mistake here to play e5. All right, thanks for the game anyway. Let's keep playing. Uh, here is alt left three minutes. Okay, I prefer five minutes, but uh, let's play three minutes. The only thing I have to be faster uh, than usually. So French defense. All right. E5. A3. That is the main line. Okay. Queen D2 is one of possibilities here. So Queen blockades my A3 pawn and Queen side in general. I have to fight with this or to compensate it somehow. So Queen G4. As far as I remember, the main line here just uh, attacking this g7, forcing g6, some sort of weakening of the position, or maybe king f8. King f8 is also a move here. And now I come back to d1, uh, protecting c2 pawn. So d4, as we may notice, is not hanging because if white, sorry, if black takes twice on d4, there is bishop b4 check, winning the queen, uh, which means I have. Um, uh, I have nothing at the moment, but I achieved something, so king is on f8, which is good. So now let's take this and castle. This line is tricky in general, of course, because black definitely have has compensation for this king on f8. And white is also having something um, for his weaknesses on the queen side in general. All right, can I play knight g5 now? So knight g5, h6, queen h5, g6. That is something active at least. Uh, another typical thing here is to take on c5 at some point. I don't remember. Let's put the knight on g5. So if cd4, cd4, or maybe if cd4, I will just start with queen h5. <clears throat> and then we will see. So what about queen h5 now? Black plays g6. I put my queen somewhere on h3. Do I have a compensation there? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but there are some strats at least. So let's try it. And there is sort of weakening of the position, so I want to provoke some weaknesses. I need something to attack, right, on the king side. Okay, queen h3. I guess I lose some material after queen takes c2, but okay. I have to play aggressively here because position requires exactly this. So it's still positional chess, I think. The only issue that maybe it's not completely correct. So maybe black has enough counterplay to make my attack not that efficient. So my bishop on d2 is hanging. That's important to save the bishop on the board. So let's put the bishop on e3. Save square. Now queen f5. What is that? Let's play g4. So, of course, I don't want to exchange queens here. That's clear. And it's kind of tempo move, which is good. Because now if queen goes to d3, I have knight takes e6. 
Aha, that is what I didn't see. <laughs> Another blunder. So queen h8, queen takes g4. Yeah, maybe very bad for white. Or maybe just a perpetual, I don't know. Position isn't clear. So if the king goes to e7, then bishop takes g5. Maybe annoying. At very least, I have queen g7 there. And the knight struggles to find a square to be developed. So I think, uh, yeah, will be just a draw. But we'll see. So yeah, I can't escape the perpetual, so. Yeah, it's just a draw. Uh, an interesting game, so let's see uh, what happened here. So after this queen a5, bishop d2, queen a4, queen g4 is definitely a move. <clears throat> Attacking g7 and after king f8, queen d1 is the main line. But after b6, I don't remember what is the most promising move. Uh, knight f3 looks natural, right? Um, there are some ideas also to play h4, as far as I remember, to uh, employ the rook uh, this way. So to play rook h3 and then rook to f3. So maybe h4 is the most promising idea. Also, with the help of h4, I create a thread of h5, kind of grabbing the space on the king side, and then the rook can go to uh, h4 even, just uh, exerting some pressure along the fourth rank, and so on. You know, knight f3 is probably not the best option, so bishop a6 takes to make a castle. If queen takes on a6 here, then there is no longer a blockade uh, of my queen side, so I have a chance to play a4, which is very useful because Later on, I will have a possibility to activate my bishop through c1 and a3. Typical idea for these positions, because bishop is usually struggling to find active um, position, to find uh, the place where it will exert a real pressure on black's position, because usually black tries something like h6, just uh, limiting the activity of this guy. And if white has a chance to play a4, bishop c1, bishop a3, it is usually good. That's why uh, it is better for black to take on a6 with the knight. Now I castled and rook c8. That is an interesting position. I'm not sure uh, what to do here. Uh, maybe knight g5 was just too much. Maybe it was just too much. Um, probably it was better for me to do something else. Maybe to start with h4, h5 here and to see how it works. Uh, but there is um, unfortunately a concrete threat of taking on d4 which is uh, not clear how to react. So for example, if h4, cd4, if I take here, then c2 is probably hanging, but maybe I'm wrong. So after cd4, and for example, queen c2, I have rook c1 move, just winning the game on the spot, because if queen d1, I just take on c8 first. And if rook takes c2, then I also have this rook c1. So maybe there was no threat, and uh, I actually could take my time and to play h4. So most likely knight e7 uh, could have been a move here, uh, protecting the rook and developing the piece, where after uh, I can try this h5. Uh, creating sort of h6 weakening the position on the king side. So now if cd4, I'm not forced to take with the pawn, so I can take with the knight if I want. Um, also preparing some activity like queen f3, attacking e6, h6 is still a threat, and so on. So maybe h6 should be played here after queen f3. There is king g8, uh, gradually uh, getting to h7 maybe, but it will be still problematic to, to get there. And so on. Interesting play. Uh, so don't know who is better, who is worse. So probably just a double-edged position. Uh, anyways, what happened in, in my game, uh, queen h5, g6 here, queen c2 and queen f5. Um, so I saw this line uh, I thought that after g4, queen is forced somewhere. I predicted queen c2 because if queen goes to d3, there is very annoying knight takes e6 check. And if f takes e6, bishop takes h6 check, and then I take the queen. So uh, here I saw that my opponent will play queen c2, but uh, well, he surprised me with this h takes g5, where after black at very least has no problem. So queen g4, king h1, queen f3, and so forth. Um, okay. Mm, yeah, so here is a draw, it's the best result, I guess, because uh, if black tries to play this for a win, uh, he has to uh, develop the rest of pieces. So the knight on a6 is misplaced, very far from the king side. The knight g8 is also pinned and can't actually be developed quickly. 
Um, so I already have a threat here. So after King G1, if black doesn't uh, repeat, uh, I can try H3 if I want to just prevent in this Queen G4 check. And then I will try to play for a win myself. Do know, maybe there are no chances anyway. Okay, very interesting encounter. Let's continue here is Azur missed. Hello. Um, I will accept the challenge. And come on guys. So it is the last challenge that I have so far. So you're welcome to challenge me. I'm playing against viewers. It's an important information, especially for those guys who attend my show for the first time. Knight e4. Knight c3. Okay, so let's try this bishop c4 just like against Karamnik student. So the same opening line. Interesting theoretic discussion. So in general, uh, white has nothing here if black plays correctly. Um, I won't reveal the correct order of moves. <laughs> just uh, because I want you to make this work for yourself. Um, bishop to e3. Let's see. So it's kind of positional sourcing. So I don't give my opponent a chance to play b5. I just slow down my own attack. That's true. But um, at the same time, black has no this quick counter attack on the queen side. So this line has its pros and cons, of course. So here's another challenge. Thank you. All right, b6, so now if f5, knight e4, queen d4, there is d5 that we already discussed. But let's play f5 still. It looks like a natural follow-up of the f4 to weaken e5 square. Sorry, to force e5 to weaken d5 square. That's what I mean. All right, this is bad. Knight takes d4 should be played because after knight c6, I don't know if Azura was uh, with us when uh, we discussed this position after the game against Karamnik student, but here I can play bishop d5 or knight e5 uh, with a great advantage in my opinion in both cases. So let's try bishop d5. I mean, this forces the exchange and I want my knight on d5, and I get my knight on d5 without problems. Does a tempo move? Bishop on e7 is handy. And pawn on b6 as well, but uh, what is really important here is that I have a chance to come up with f6 very soon. Oh. Completely open in the position on the king side, which is great. Queen d7. All right, knight b6 is just the move that wins a lot. Um, but f6 is also kind of winning move. Let's try f6. I think my attack will be crushing there. Yeah, Kramnik student says two people playing the same mistake. Yeah. And it makes it instructive, I think. It's so painful, I know, but instructive at the same time. Okay. Where is my crushing attack? <laughs> uh, where is it? Where is it? Come on. F takes g7, rook goes to e8, most likely. Then what? Queen is going to g4, right? Hmm. How to prevent this? Okay, let's put the rook on f5. To prevent queen g4 and uh, to create something like rook g5 threat, maybe. Do you know, I want to force black to play g6 and then just to checkmate on g7 at some point. Yeah, of course, I know I could just capture on b6 and win without problems. But I don't think this is kind of problematic position. So queen goes to g4, looks 
pretty much straightforward and efficient at the same time with the threat of queen g7 checkmate. Now g6 and uh, what about queen g5 simply with the threat of queen h6? Do I blunder something? Well, there is always bishop takes f6, right? So queen h4, bishop takes d5, queen h6, bishop takes f6. Oh crap, that's not very pleasant. That is not very pleasant. So bishop d5 is a real threat now because after that my pawn on f6 will be hanging. Wow. It feels like I tricked myself. That is amazing. Okay, I can play queen g5, bishop d5, uh, queen h6, bishop takes f6, rook takes f6. Will be still very promising, but it's not that winning. <laughs> Uh, interesting stuff. <clears throat> okay, so what can I do alternatively? So 97 bishop e7, f takes e7. Right. I can finally take on b6. I think knight takes b6 is a good move now. Yeah, let's take on b6. Knight b6, bishop b6, bishop b6 if king goes to h8, all right. There is still no threat of taking on f5, but after knight b6, bishop b6 and bishop b6, uh, there is also a threat of what? Of bishop takes e4 and then taking on f5. What about bishop takes b6, bishop takes d5, bishop takes d8, bishop takes e4. But in this case, I can play queen g5 and queen h6. I think it wins, right? Huh, interesting. Let's check. Maybe I'm just blundering something, but I think in this case... There is a checkmate, after all. Well, at least I'm just eliminating this bishop. Which is a potential problem for me. <clears throat> Alright, now what? Come on, Andre, what is going on? Queen g5, bishop b4, queen h6, rook g8. Oh my goodness. Just doing shit. Yeah. Completely lost the thread. Fantastic. Still good, though, but no longer as great as it was. Come on. Oh, thanks God. Thanks God. I was just about to lose this. <laughs> Come on, after all this. Wow, analysis board, so. Maybe I was just blind completely, I don't know, but it felt like there should be a checkmate, but somehow I didn't find it. So first of all, of course, this is lost position. After bishop d5, knight d5, and queen d7, I can just take on b6, and it's absolutely lost positionally, uh, materially, and so forth. But okay, I decided to play f6, bishop goes to d8, now rook to f5. I have no idea. f takes g7 is also winning, but let's say rook here. Bishop goes to b7. 
And now I somehow played something uh, really stupid, I think. Yeah, rook g5 was a move here. Rook g5 instead of queen g4 to start with. So attacking g7. And uh, the idea here is that if, uh, let's say, bishop d5, I just play rook g7, and after king h8, simply queen h5. And there is a checkmate next move. So it's not possible to uh, take on d5 in this case. So rook g5. f6 is also not hanging here because uh, g7 is pinned. So bishop f6, knight f6, and wins. Um, so what to do? g6 most likely. And now I just get to this h5 if I want. But there is still the same problem, right? So bishop d5 is a threat, and then my f6 is hanging. So most likely, I still have to uh, take on b6 here. And the difference is that my rook is not hanging. That's probably something important, but after bishop d5, bishop d8, and queen d8, well, black is fine, <laughs> f6 is hanging. Come on, maybe there is no checkmate or something. Okay, let's come back to uh, my game. So queen g4, um, g6, and what to do now? I don't know, rook a, f1 was a suggestion. Uh, rook a to f1 was it should say. Okay, so engine says queen g4 is a mistake. So what the engine suggests instead of that? Uh, best move, f takes g7. All right, yeah, I understood that. But uh, I didn't think that there would be no checkmate after g6. I thought I will have just a uh, direct way to g7 square. So I wanted to play something like queen g5 here, but now just bishop takes d5. Um, and after queen h6, bishop takes f6. That was exactly what I missed uh, before playing queen g4. And there is no checkmate. Come on, that's amazing. So I can take on f6, of course, but after bishop e4, it's not clear if I get to f6 with my bishop. I still have some initiative, I guess, because of uh, this uh, great weakness of dark squares around uh, black scheme, but black also has a counterplay. So there is queen g4 threat, for instance, attacking my g2 and so forth. So there is nothing. Yeah, amazing. How, could, how the one can actually uh, spoil everything uh, with a natural move, to be honest. So queen g4 was so natural. Can't believe in that. Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting defense. So yeah, just have to uh, actually uh, take what you are given, right? So here, knight b6, just take it and uh, win. Um, there is a common sense, right? So if there is a possibility to checkmate opponent's king uh, and uh, to grab a lot of material, just grab the material because there there is a possibility that there is simply no checkmate, <laughs> just like in this game, right? Okay, uh, interesting experience. Thanks for the game. So another challenge, let's play. e4, e5. So here is what? Now, uh, Rui Lopez. Exchanged variation. And my favorite move, queen f6. Why I like this queen f6? Because, uh, well, the main line f6 is absolutely playable, but it definitely leads to the end game. Uh, after queen f6, there are some lines that lead to a middle game position with uh, opposite side castling, uh, which is slightly more dynamic. Uh, so David Sim says, calculating to checkmate is easier in long games. Exactly. Uh, well. Okay. Queen first goes to d6. To prevent, queen takes d4 with the threat of a checkmate on d8. White, of course, can take on d4 with a queen now, but if compared to the endgame from the main line, is slightly different in the sense of uh, that my pawn is still on f7. So some people say that it changes everything and after that white has no uh, advantage whatsoever. I don't know, is it that critical to have the pawn on f6 or on f7? Well, actually it gives me some additional uh, things. I mean, uh, e6 square is not weakened, for instance, if compared to the situation when my pawn is already on f6. And uh, there are some nuances, of course. Mm, don't know, c5. Should I play c5 in general here or not? 
Or is it a good idea for me just to stick to development? Let's start with the bishop d7. So it feels like I still have to play f6 to castle long, but uh, I can do it with the knight e7 move. Avoid in f6, maybe intending to play h6 instead. Knight e2, all right. So knight e7, that is what I wanted to play. To cover diagonal h4, d8 and to castle. Next move. Knight goes to f3, intent to occupy e5. Uh, but it's not very dangerous, I guess, so let's castle. If knight e5, I have bishop e8 move. Protect in f7, attack in d4, and intending to play f6. Attacking the knight on e5 and the bishop on g5. Okay, <clears throat> so now what? It's time to do something with this bishop on g5, I think. So let's play h6. The question, is castle necessary here? I'm not sure about which castle uh, you're talking because, uh, well, White's castle uh, was probably necessary. Uh, Black's castle, also a good idea if you want to coordinate your piece as well. Because with the king on the eight, it's not that simple. All right, so what to do now? Um, I can try something like f5 here, undermine an e4 pawn. This allows e5, of course, but after that, I'll have some play. So d5 square will be possible for me to occupy with the knight and so on. There is also just a simple g6 followed by bishop g7. I guess I will start with this development and then we will see what to do. G5 was also interesting. Well, weakening a lot, but it looks like I control a lot as well. Um, and G5 is slightly more active. With some intention of putting the knight on G6 and then on F4 even. Who knows? Maybe it could have been quite annoying. Okay, B4. This attack is unusual in the endgame stage, but... Maybe it also makes sense. Let's see. So for now, I just stop b5 because in this case, I'll play c5. Uh, but after rook b1, white kind of regains the threat of that. Okay. And now I regret that I didn't play g5. Because in this case, I could have played f5 in this particular position. And after e5, I could have played even f4 because g5 supports this. Yeah. Probably I was too passive. Anyway, let's play f5 and grab some squares for my knight and uh, potentially my bishops. Let us see. So if uh, e takes f5, all right, knight takes f5, and I'm happy with the result of the opening stage, although it is already an endgame stage, but it feels like a middle game without queens. And uh, I played bishop g7 only one move ago, so I, I'm still in the stage of completing the development. So now I wanted to put my knight on d5, in fact. Maybe it's better to start with the g5 intended g4 or f4. Because if I play knight d5, bishop simply goes to d2, then what? Knight b6 maybe attacking a4, and then knight to c4. And that is also an interesting thing. So let's try this. Knight e5, creating some threats. So to c3 square, for example, to take the bishop and damage the pawn structure. Uh, 
By the way, after bishop d2, I'm not even forced to react to this c4 threat because it is not really a threat. So I can play g5 exactly in this case. Well, who knows? Let's see. Position is quite complicated. All right, this is forced. So bishop e8. And this pawn, despite looking very annoying, may become a weakness. So it can't be supported with other pawns, so only protect it with other pieces, and I can attack it gradually. Let's see. C4. All right. Let's take <clears throat> the bishop. And now, um, I have to coordinate my pieces somehow, but first, I guess I have to solve the problem of this potential e7 threat. So let's put the bishop on f6, preventing that. Now, I guess it makes sense for me to start with this move. Now, c5 looks just also very good. Getting rid of this knight d4 it was really the most active piece, I guess. So it feels like b5 was a mistake, to be honest. Because now there is no longer access to d4 square. My bishop controls a1, so I can't uh, actually get use of the a file, at least quickly. And it feels like I have the time to attack e6. Um, let's see. So let's take here. Let's play rook h7, intending this rook e7, attacking e6. Doesn't stop me from rook e7, so let's just take this pawn. e3 is also under attack, now g5 controlling f4. Now black's position should be winning, but I have some time issues. But okay, I have 30 seconds, my opponent has less, so should be comfortably winning. Let's simplify the position. If possible and centralizing the king. Yeah, so um, after I managed to grab the pony six, I think I was uh, winning already, but uh, all right. Uh, so let's see. Bishop c6, d6, castles here. Bishop g5, queen d4, one of possible lines. And now I don't think that knight d2 is the best square for the knight. I do believe that uh, knight c3 is slightly more natural supporting uh, the pawn e4 and um, actually being ready to occupy d5 once I play c5. So to knight d2, probably the most Mm, natural reaction is just to kick the knight away from the center with the help of c5 move because there is no longer issue with the d5 square. Probably just c5 here and after knight goes to I don't know even where let's say to b3 then I can play something like bishop e6 I think or even to start with a5 right to force this and then to play bishop e6 controlling c4 limiting the activity of this guy at some point, just b6 protecting everything, knight to e7, castles, and so forth. Just a typical play, but the knight is definitely misplaced. So I decided not to <clears throat> uh, go into detail details and just play knight e7, then castled. So here, knight e5 is in dead jurors because of bishop e8. The knight is hanging, as you can see, there is also a threat potentially to play f6. So it gives white absolutely nothing. Um, so white played a4. And here I think I made a mistake, so it was definitely a good idea for me just to limit the activity of white's pieces on the queen side and to play a5, in fact. Uh, in this case, there is no follow-up in the form of b4 and so forth. Um, and uh, I can play this h6, g5 or h6, g6 later on, so there is no rush. 
Um, if white plays something like knight b3, attacking a5, okay, I just play b6, protecting a5, and I think I'm fine, right? So, mm, yeah, that is where I could have played better. As for white, white played okay, but uh, after g6, I think g6 is uh, not a good idea in general. White could have played something really annoying for black, so uh, it could have been knight b3, uh, creating a positional threat of just getting to c5. Uh, if I play b6 here, then of course a5. It's really annoying, so I just uh, uh, don't have time to protect my queen side properly, so uh, most likely I can't play b6 here. So I considered bishop g7, but after bishop g7, that is what really annoying. So bishop d4, exchanging this bishop, or forcing me to play f6. White is so annoying because uh, black's compensation for a bad pawn structure on the queen side is pair of bishops. And if white manages to exchange the dark squared one, uh, black will struggle for sure. Just a simple example, bishop takes d4, knight takes d4. Look at this guy, bishop d7. So it's very hard to find a way to activate it. So white's knights uh, simply control a lot of squares limiting the activity of this bishop. There is knight c5, potential threat, there is just an a5, or just a combination of a5 and knight c5. Something like this, I can't play c5 here. If I play b6, as uh, I already said, there is a problem with the a4, a5, usually just damaging the pawn structure and so forth. So this is really annoying for black. I think that was the best opportunity for white to try this, because after b4, well, uh, the diagonal is actually very, weak and I benefit from it easily. Um, at very least, um, I just um, win some time for development where after I have no problems anymore. And this was, uh, well, very active at first glance, but look, this pawn is rather a weakness than a power because the e-file is closed and uh, there is a big uh, problem with finding pieces being able to protect it in case of attack. So no surprises that very soon I actually managed to win it. Uh, but b5 was definitely uh, a great help. Uh, because after this and c5, look, you no longer have this knight protecting. So I just go and grab it. That's the idea. Okay, uh, let's continue. Let's continue. Uh, there are some new challenges. So let us play... Let us play somebody, I don't know. Let's play this guy first, now we'll see. Okay, black pieces again. E4, E5, let's repeat this. Rui Lopez, all right, Queen H5, no Rui Lopez. My goodness, what's going on? Queen f6 is playable here, knight f6 as well. So what is the point? What is the point? Let's see. What is the point? So... Bishop g4 to start with, or just bishop e6. What is better? I have no idea. Let's put the bishop on e6. Looks like a natural move, just developing the piece. And now let's castle. I have no idea. I just developed my pieces. And white does something strange. So a lot of moves with queen, a lot of moves with already developed pieces. It is just against the principles of opening play, right? So the question Santa Claus asks me, why 25, 48 and in chess 24, 29, 50? Because first of all, I play not so often uh, on Lee chess. That is the first factor that probably matters. Uh, another thing that uh, probably there are just two different systems of uh, awarding rating points. So 
Maybe the one on Lee Chess is simply not that generous if compared to Chess24. For example, on Chess.com I also have something around 2600. Uh, and my best rating on chess.com was 2640 or something like this. Um, here on chess, uh, sorry, on Lee Chess, um, my best rating was above 2700. In fact, I just lost a lot of rating points here. Uh, don't know why. <laughs> Maybe because of my bad form. <laughs> something like that. Okay, to take with the bishop or with the queen. Uh, both look playable. I will take with the bishop just to see what white wants to do. So now I have a pair of bishops. Potentially very good. What about on ICC? Well, I haven't played on ICC for, I don't know, maybe <clears throat> seven years or something. But when I was an active player on ICC, I used to be somewhere on... So my best rating was, I guess, also around 2800s. So something close to or maybe slightly above 2800s. But it was many years ago, actually, when I was younger and probably faster. <laughs> So, yeah, my best win on ICC was against, I think, as my Parashvili when he was around 2900, something like that. So it was many years ago. I can't even remember. I also used to play on play chess. There my best win was against, well, my most memorable win was against uh, Nigel Short. Of course, I lost a lot of games to Nigel Short, but I managed to play several draws and uh, even to win one game. But I was at times, I was kind of Fide Master and I was rated 2300s in real chess and so forth. All right, what to do now? To play knight d4 looks like a natural thing because knight takes d4 leads to e d4 with a fork. With the help of this move, I just attack c2. And also the bishop on b5 starts feeling not very comfortable. And I guess it makes sense for me just to take it. Now I have two bishops against two knights. Who's better? That's an interesting question. So let's start grabbing the space and active play in the center to prove that my bishops are better than this knights. f4. Okay. Aggressive. Aggressive guys, so queen b6, queen b2 isn't very inspiring. So d takes e4 looks like a natural thing. So let's take this pawn. Now f5 looks like a natural follow up, but then knight c5, I'm not sure. Is it good for me or not? Mm, and there is also an interesting idea just to play what? To start with queen b6 and then to play f5. So let's do it, let's try it. So check. So the question, who wants to open center, black or white? Well, looks like both sides. <laughs> um, but I will be happy if the position will become more open than, than it is at the moment, because I have a pair of bishops, right? It's just a natural thing. Mm, B2 is hanging or not hanging, I'm not sure, so let's grab the space first. Maybe it's just too much the way I play. I mean, I shouldn't underestimate White's chances. White is also having something. For example, after f5, I just weaken my position. So g6 becomes quite vulnerable and so forth. Just have to be careful.
Okay, Arthur Novorovsky came. Hello, my friend. So, so, so. Yeah, and Mick, Mick came as well. Very nice, guys. Thanks for joining the show. Again, I will repeat. So, uh, after the show ends, please come to the uh, video on YouTube and leave the comment uh, with your opinion about the possible time slots for Sunday and for Monday. So two days, so definitely Monday, it should be somewhere in the evening, maybe closer to even the night. Um, but what about Sunday? That is an interesting question. So there are usually options. I mean, I'm going to stick with Sunday and Monday each and every week. So today I started in an early stage of the day. Maybe it's not very good. So just share your opinion in comments after the show ends. All right, so knight c3. Now f takes e5 might be a problem for me because after bishop e5, h6 is hanging. I wanted to try this interesting move, so just e4. First of all, uh, leaving white without this counterplay based on <coughs> f takes e5. Second of all, activating the rook in case white takes on e4. And if white doesn't take on e4, okay, it's even better for me. Now rook d8, that is what I wanted to do, attacking the queen. And now I think I can take on e4, because if knight e4, then bishop takes b2. That was my initial idea. All right, let's take it. With pleasure. Um, bishop takes c1. I think I grab some material, right? a b6. At least I have extra exchange now. Now to bishop f5. Okay. Rook f4 is kind of simple tactics here, using the um, back rank, right? Yeah, interesting. Interesting how quickly this changed. So let's try to understand what happened here. Um, after f4, position started uh, changing, right? Knight e4, queen b6, king goes here. I didn't want to take on b2 immediately because of rook b1 with some play, but I do believe that queen b2 was also playable because in this case, well, in this case, uh, I don't grab the material if white attacks my queen with another rook, by the way, uh, because there I have to go to a3. But it was playable. I mean, I don't lose the queen after queen b2. Everything is fine. So position becomes imbalanced. And that is what you probably want to achieve if you have a pair of bishops. But I decided to play f5. Only after that, I realized that uh, position is not that simple because now white has a threat of taking on e5. My h6 is uh, vulnerable. My g6 is vulnerable as well. That's why I came up with the idea of just playing e4 here. After d takes e4, rook to d8, um, there is a problem with the queen. So I think that queen e1 was probably better than queen c1 because in this case, if I take on e4, there is no bishop b2 at the end of the variation. But... Um, and there is still a possibility to take on b2 with a queen. Now c2 is hanging, right? So even if knight takes c4, just take on b2, then c2, and so forth. And I have this open position that uh, I was trying to achieve. After queen c1, I just took on e4. My opponent quickly reacted with the knight e4, uh, probably blundering bishop b2. Uh, but if white doesn't blunder this bishop b2 and doesn't take on e4, well, I, I also achieved what I wanted. So position became much more open now. I have more active pieces, so I'm going to play e3, then probably rook d2, something like this. There is also usually an interesting plan of bishop c4, exerting additional pressure on white's position. So position becomes pleasant for black and quite ugly for white. Um, after knight e4, of course, it's lost. After bishop b2, bishop c1, and uh, okay, rook f4, simple tactics. If rook takes f4, 
then rook goes to d1 with the checkmate. So as for the opening stage, I don't believe in the power of this queen h5, but okay, if you want, you can play it. It's probably not the opening uh, that uh, you can use if you want to learn playing chess, so I don't recommend it. But if you want to surprise your opponent, maybe queen h5 makes sense. Um, as for this position, I already think I'm absolutely fine, and uh, this action uh, is also not that clear to me why white just uh, gave up uh, a bishop because there is no chance to occupy d5 it makes no sense and uh, after castling well like has so many different active opportunities including the one i chose so knight d4 queen d2 it was possible by the way to attack the center immediately with the help of f5 it was also possible to play c6 d5 even without capturing the bishop on b5 and so on so Looks like black easily grabs the initiative and benefits from it. That's the point. Okay. Um, let's continue. Uh, here is another guy willing to play and uh, back to white pieces. Okay. E4. C5. Knight F3. So how is the stream so far? Are you satisfied or not? Tell me, please. E5, knight B5, A6, and I guess to D6. Queen takes D6. Queen F6. All right, so there is a difference, a serious difference between uh, Queen F6 and Queen E7. So if Black plays Queen E7, it's uh, is a bad idea to take on E7 because after Knight E7, there is D5 and Bishop F5. Uh, later on I will tell you what do I mean after Queen f6 it's possible to take here and after Knight c3 Knight b4 is probably the main move here oh no Knight d4 instead all right Bishop d3 then so the point of that if Knight goes to b4 then there is a difference if uh, Black's Knight is on e7 there is additional possibility to play d5 and then Bishop f5 f5 square is controlled Here's the knight on f6, so there is no control over f5 in case of knight b4. In case of this knight d4, it's absolutely different. So what is the point? What is going on if I just play bishop b3 here? Bishop b3, just intending to take the knight and uh, damage the pawn structure. F4 is also very tempting to do because I have pair of bishops once again, but then d6, I think, and I don't achieve much. All right, let's start with bishop e3. I just want to understand what black is going to do. So I want to take on d4 and play knight e2. And win the pawn on d4. All right, so feels like black just lost the time on this knight e4. Let's see. So now I can easily occupy d5 if I want. I mean, I can play bishop c4 and then knight e5. I can play knight e5 immediately if I want. But there is usually this problem with uh, knight b4. How to prevent knight b4? Uh, bishop c5 looks very good, honestly. Preventing d6, preventing knight b4, and intended maybe to play bishop d6. So let's try this bishop c5. Feels like very good positional decision. Just fighting for dark squares. It is the main drawback of this system, by the way. And it feels like, for now, black just loses the fight for dark squares. There was a suggestion of playing knight e6 instead of knight c6. All right, in that case, I think knight e5 is very promising. But we'll see after the game. So now it's clear that white is better. Question is how to convert it. It's knight e5 right now. Looks very natural. 
It's also possible to start with a4. I will start with a4, undermining the pawn. And if b4, then knight d5 looks even stronger. Because b4 will be hanging. Yeah. Looks like an overwhelming position for white. Bear of bishops, a lot of hanging pawns, more space. This ugly king on e8, having no chance to castle anywhere. Knight e4. Okay, now I can take on b4 easily. I can also simply castle. And then rookie one will be devastating. I don't know what, what is better. Well, let's castle. I don't know. With the idea of rookie one. b4 is still hanging. Okay, Kramnik student is going away. Thanks a lot for being with me today and all the best. See you soon. So a5 protecting b4, but rook e1 is still here. So let's put the rook on e1, attacking e5 and the knight on d4 at the same time. It's over. Feels like it's over. There is a question, was bishop b5 good to sacrifice? Well, it makes no sense to sacrifice anything when you have an overwhelming position. It's just against the common sense. For example, here, as you can see, I have simply extra, I don't know, minor piece. Absolutely winning position, no risk at all. That's so why should I sacrifice anything? Right. So bishop g6, king f8 is not quite a checkmate, but f4, I think, should finish the attack. That's why I put my rook a1 to e1. Just wanted to use this one for this f4, after all. Rook c6. All right, let's put the bishop on c7. To save the pawn on d6, it is very important. Pawn in a sense of limiting the king. All right, now check. Take c5. And the checkmate is coming. <sighs> Inevitably. Just like in Game of Thrones, if we talk about the winter, here it is even better. There is no chance for black to avoid a checkmate very soon, I guess. If there are a checkmate, so e6 looks like a checkmate in thing because there is d7 after that. We can also just take on f6 with a pawn. Let's take on f6 with a pawn. There is a question from Alexei Gurov in chat. Ukraine? Yes, Ukraine. So rook takes f6. Rook e7 is also winning. What is better? Let's put the rook on e7 first to control g7 square. And now rook f6. Rook f6 is coming. Rook f6 is coming. So black is minor piece down at the same time. Uh, there is no coordination whatsoever, so no compensation. Keen is very poor and abandoned. So I'm very close now. So it takes here.
can't see a checkmate, that's strange. So let's do this instead. Let's take everything here. Just everything. Oh my goodness. I have not so much time. That's a problem, but not a big one. All right, so. Um, yeah, my pleasure, Alexei. Um, so Alexei is also from Ukraine, that's great. So, um, what about this game? Uh, let's see. I think the problem started exactly uh, in the opening. So, after queen d6, queen f6, queen f6, knight f6, and knight c3, the main move is knight b4 or d5. It is just a transposition, doesn't really matter. So, uh, the point, knight b4, bishop here, uh, then d5, e takes d5, knight takes d3, takes here, and Black tries to regain this d5 pawn or d3 pawn. White tries to uh, complete a development quickly, something like this, and counterattack this e5 one. And uh, to prove that uh, his better development and more active pieces uh, mean anything here. Um, so it is also possible to take the bishop on d3 without playing d5 here, just to play this sort of position like d6, bishop e6, and so forth. So maybe to start with the h6 here. But the point is that uh, Black should eliminate this bishop, in my opinion, because after knight e4 and bishop d3, I can't see a compensation. So I have a pair of bishops and a very strong play against Black's weaknesses, potentially. After h6, I played bishop e3, um, now creating the threat of bishop d4. So somebody suggested knight e6 in chat, well, several players suggested it, and uh, now I think that knight e5 is good. So I don't quite get where this knight goes. So after knight e5, e d5, have no idea. So knight f4, all right, I can even take this guy and play d6 with absolutely winning position. <laughs> so this guy will hardly ever uh, find a good place while I just castle rookie one, rookie seven, and so forth, winning the guy. So in my opinion, this knight e4 line is just not very good in general. Uh, probably I don't know anything, uh, something, sorry. But, um, well, if anything, uh, this shouldn't be good because knight on d4 is vulnerable and uh, you don't actually <clears throat> balance the positions. So at the moment it's imbalanced because white has pair of bishops. You have to compensate it somehow with sort of active counterplay or something. But knight d4 doesn't give you a follow up. That's my point. All right. Anyways, um, so let's keep playing. Let's keep playing. Um, yeah, I think we will play uh, two more games because I have some stuff to do today. Um, soon after uh, the, I don't know, 20 minutes go by. So let's play chess boss and playing with black. B3. Knight C6. Knight f6. All right, e4. It's an interesting position. There is also an interesting question, usually. Can I play something like d6 here? Just attacking the knight f5, and if knight g7, then king f8. Then knight goes to h5, obviously. So it's not good. So what about d5 with the same idea? d5, knight g7, king f8, knight goes to h5, and now d4, closing diagonal, and so forth. Is it too much, or is it playable? Because in this case, I have more space, and I have some pressure. White's position. Well, although it is not an experimental Monday, just a chill out Sunday, 
I want to try it. So maybe I'm completely lost after that, but well, it's interesting. All right, after knight g3, it is completely justified. So I thought my opponent will definitely take on g7, but he decided to avoid it. All right, so that might be h5. h5 looks great with the h4 and so forth. So tomorrow I'm going to continue, as I said before, I'll stick with Sundays and Mondays uh, in a sense of uh, this broadcast each and every week. So tomorrow there will be Experimental Monday and um, I'm going to start around 7.30 in the evening uh, Central Europe time. So you're welcome as well. <clears throat> Let's keep doing the stuff. So h3, we can in white's position on the king side. My attack goes very, very quick, very fast. So if g3, then bishop goes to g4. G takes h3, all right. This should be also good for black. Let us see. Let's take with rook. Bishop takes h3 is also absolutely playable, no questions. And I'm gradually getting to h2, I think. Well, at least it feels like that. So knight f4, and I wanted to put my rook on h4. Just controlling g4 squares, so that's making bishop g4 possible. Because if bishop g4, there is something like bishop f6, which is potentially not that clear, even if I grab the rook on a1, you know, maybe I overestimate White's counterplay, but feels like it's better to avoid it. So the question after knight takes g7, what to do? Uh, king f8, I wanted to play king f8, attacking the knight g7. And in case knight h5, I wanted to play d4, closing the diagonal. And then I'm a pawn down, but at the same time, I think I have a better development and uh, some good counter chances. That was my idea. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there was nothing, in fact, but felt like a reasonable option. So now let's put the bishop on g4. And now what? Now I wanted to put my knight on e5. Can I do it? Knight takes e4 in this case. So it's better to stick to something positional. So bishop takes e2, queen takes e2 probably. I don't know, let's take it. In any case, I have a better pawn structure. So even long term, I should be better. So queen d7 castles and then just rook h8 and so forth. d4 is more forcing continuation. There is also rook takes f4 and knight d4. Yeah, that is what I want to do. So takes here. There was, by the way, another idea behind rook h4. I had it in mind. And now it should work just fine. So e takes f4, knight goes to d4, attacking the queen. Queen can't go to e3 because knight c2. Knight controls b5 at the same time. So there is no check. So queen probably goes to f1, where after I have knight f3 check. And, well, I have a completely compensated material disadvantage. <laughs> 
I think so. So knight f3. I'm an exchange down, but look, this king starts struggling for sure. Uh, now say queen d7, preparing castle and queen h3 at the same time. And it's not an f3, it's just like a bone in the throat. That feels very, very good. Very good position. Okay, d3, I guess castling should be played. All right. So each and every piece should take part in the game. Maybe queen h3 was more precise to start with. But well, in this case, it doesn't really matter. Just a transposition. Now I take on e4 simply. Right. There is also a possibility just to play knight h5, but why not to take? Attacking the queen at the same time. And now, I do believe there is more than one way to the roam. What about knight g1 check? And knight g1 check should be devastating. No, queen takes g1, come on. Focus. <laughs> Focus. Queen takes g1 protecting f2. Okay, knight e4, knight e2. Candidate moves, queen g2 simply. Too many options. Just too many different options. <laughs> simply queen h5. Okay, let's put the knight on d2 after all. Preparing queen f3 check. And controlling f1 square at the same time. It doesn't really matter in this position, but still very pleasant. Now I take here first. Uh... I come back to f3, then take on d2, and take on f2, to take literally everything, right? And I'll say e3. Now, queen f1, checkmate. Okay, it's over, it's over. So, interesting game. Uh, the most interesting part was here, uh, prior to knight g3, so... Uh, it was interesting if it is it was possible to play knight g7, king f8. Of course, if bishop f6, then queen f6 win in the game. So knight h5 should be played with the idea of knight takes h5, bishop takes h8. So here I wanted to play this d4, closing the diagonal, uh, but creating no threats, in fact, because knight on h5 is protected. Uh, there is, however, something like bishop g4 potentially possible. So that is an interesting position to play because... I think white is a pawn up and probably black's initiative is not that uh, dangerous, in fact. So if knight goes to f4 here, I'm not sure I have anything specific. So maybe I have some pressure, maybe I have some space, but my king on f8 is ugly and uh, most likely white is just fine and even more than fine. That's the point. So I think knight g7 was completely playable. Uh, because after knight g3 and h5, black just enjoys the position, right? Uh, because after bishop b5, h4, knight e2, h3, well, uh, black plays almost automatically without much thinking, just um, producing one weakness after another in white's camp. So takes here, then rook h4, and so forth. Yeah. Um, yeah, knight c3, just bishop g4, takes, takes. Now there is a weakness on f3 that I immediately use. So rook f4, knight e4, and knight f3. 
I think black is just uh, very close to winning in this situation. So of course white has extra material, but pieces are completely disorientated, uh, disoriented, uh, not coordinated, and uh, well, it's just a question of few moves to bring all the pieces towards the white skin and uh, just checkmate it or come up with a serious attack, just like it happened in our game. I played this d3 it was possible, for example, to start with this. Then after king e2 to play even something like knight h5 and so forth. So castling is also good. Takes, takes. Yeah, there is simply no defense. Absolutely lost position. Okay, so knight takes g7 was an interesting option to make the things not that clear. All right, so the last game uh, for today. Just a second. Let me see who to play. Um... Let's play with so what? <laughs> so what? E4. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can find the link uh, behind my name. So there is a short short link bit.ly slash Mostrovsky. There you will easily find the button subscribe. Just subscribe and turn on the notification. So live shows reminder. Uh, it looks like a bell and you will be notified every time when I'm online so you won't miss the show uh, tomorrow I'm going to play the one in the evening so as I said before 7 30 Central Europe time you're welcome to join me So this looks like an exchanged variation of uh, Rui Lopez and uh, White has some compensation for missing pair of bishops, right? Because of the pawn structure of the queen's side. Or you can say the opposite, so um, to compensate the pawns on the queen side, this pawn structure black has to prove that this bishops mean anything. So I played knight b3 being no afraid of bishop takes b3 because in this case uh, black loses one of his bishops, which is good for me. This development of the queen on d6 is not very typical in my opinion. Usually it goes to e7. Can I use it somehow? So can I play d4 now? Intending to play e4, e5 if e5 pawn takes d4? I have no idea. So if I play d4, there are some things like well, bishop g4, or maybe simply knight to d7, and so forth. It looks very tempting to try, so I'll do it. it looks sensible because e5 is under pressure. And now black has to decide what to do because e5 is under pressure, d5 is e5 is under attack. E takes d4 doesn't work. Bishop takes d4 doesn't work. Yeah, bishop g4 is a playable move. But now I can start with uh, this. So it takes on e5. And this is what I wanted to achieve. So now I have. Uh, same advantage because of this uh, pawn structure on the queen side, doubled pawns, so it feels like I have an extra pawn on the king side. But black no longer has pair of bishops. That is the idea. 
behind this operation. <coughs> d4 and yeah, to bishop g4, black is more or less forced to give up a bishop. Now bishop f4 looks like a move. But then queen takes b2, I have to understand if I have a compensation after that. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure I have. So bishop f4, queen takes b2, if I attack the queen, then what? Nothing, right? I can play c3, just limiting the activity of the queen, but it's also not that clear to me. Hmm. Interesting situation. Okay, let's play. It looks like an active move. It looks like that exactly this sort of activity uh, our current position requires and... What do we do today? We play positional chess, right? So bishop f4, queen is under attack. Queen e4 leads to rook e1. Queen b2 wins a pawn. But now I wanted to do what? To play this c4 move. Another active move intending to play c5, trapping the bishop. Controlling d5 square, so maybe intending to play e5 also. Especially if black plays c5, this e5 becomes very interesting because b7 will be hanging. Something like this. So I have advantage in development here. My pieces are very active. So I definitely have a compensation for this missing pawn. This queen is potentially also a vulnerability for black. We will see. There are some ideas connected with queen g3 attacking g7 and then bishop e5 attacking the queen and the knight on f6. But I have to be careful because if I play queen g3, there is usually knight h5 attacking my queen and the bishop simultaneously and protecting g7 pawn. So let's see. Let's see. I'm not sure that black has a good position here. But maybe there is a possibility to protect everything. Bishop d4. All right. This looks risky. But maybe it's playable how to punish black for this so rook b1 queen c3 that is the idea so queen still protects the bishop uh knight e4 queen d4 okay i achieve nothing e5 maybe so after e5 where the knight goes to g8 maybe now let's try it. This e5 looks very natural. So if bishop e5, bishop e5, queen e5, rook e1 wins. And here I wanted to play e6. Continuing the attack and now I have this h5 square for check. If nothing else works. That looks very strong. So, rook b1 now. Queen c3, queen h5 check, can go somewhere. I can play rook c1 or something. Yeah, let's do it. There is also an idea just to play queen e4 now, attacking the bishop and pawn on e6 simultaneously. Maybe this is even better. And easier but after queen e4 there is e5 now rook c1 where the queen goes to b4 and knight takes d4 it's lost for lost for black simply so yeah maybe queen e4 is even easier than queen h5 let's see at the moment the bishop is handing on d4 and it feels very dangerous so how many pawns I'm down? Uh, two pawns only. All right. And several are hanging. So the one on c7, the one on a6. And what is more important, the bishop on d4 is hanging as well, right? Okay, castles. Now I can take the bishop. If I want, I can take on e6 and take on d7 potentially. Hmm. 
Or maybe to start with rook c1. Rook c1 is also a move. Bishop d2 is also a move. Just going away with the bishop from this vulnerable position. I guess it's exactly what I want here. So bishop d2, bishop d4 is off the board. Now I have extra minor piece, but I have to be careful because black has some pawns to compensate that. But I'm very close to starting collecting them one by one, just like that. So knight c7. Now I take the rook, also rook b7. Uh, it's lost. Simply lost for black, but I have only seconds on the clock. So I have to be careful anyway. Uh, rook g7 is very delicious. Okay. One more. Material unit. Okay, now it's lost, for sure. So it feels like it feels like uh, Black made a mistake um, somewhere here. So first of all, I don't think that Queen D6 is a good idea. So usually Black plays something like Knight to D7, then Queen to E7, then F6. First, carefully protecting E5, and then actually uh, maneuvering the Knight through E6 to D4, something like this. So that was the point. Uh, queen d6, well, queen is potentially vulnerable here. I just play knight e2, force and bishop b6, and now it feels like black's pieces are not coordinated well. So I could have even tried this knight g5, then grabbing the bishop, something like this. Because black definitely doesn't want to put uh, the bishop somewhere on d7. In this case, I have knight c4, tempo move, and so forth. But I decided to castle h6, uh, preventing knight g5, but now knight b3. So probably the lesser evil was just to take on b3 immediately because after bishop b6 there is this d4 and black is well maybe not in trouble but it's very close to so especially after this look i just have much better developed pieces so i think this sacrifice was completely justified so i expected something like knight d7 here to be honest um protecting c5 square where after I'm not sure if I have uh, complete compensation, I considered something like um, queen h5 after that, maybe rook b1 attacking the queen, but I wasn't sure if uh, there is something concrete. Maybe queen g3 attacking c7 as well was interesting to try and so forth. But bishop d4 is definitely bad. So now after this and whatever, I don't know, queen e4, queen h5, white is much better. All right. so. Unfortunately, uh, it was uh, the last game for today. Um, and um, uh, as I said before, we are going to continue tomorrow in the evening. And um, it will be around uh, 7.30 Central Europe time. You're welcome to join me during that show. I hope you learned something new about chess today. I was trying to explain the things um, during the game, after the game. So, um, and it is my primary goal to make you learn something new. Thanks a lot for being with me and see you soon, hopefully. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.